Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys, Derry here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with a, with a new episode of Dawn Chorus, Devon's Path. So before we get started, I have a little bit of a favor to ask you all. I have My channel has been getting bombarded by bots lately, spamming like links to sexual content and stuff like that. So if you guys could please, if you see any of that in the comments section, please report it for me. It makes my job making videos a little bit easier. Uh, I'd really appreciate it because it has been really ramping up lately and I wonder if it's because my channel is getting closer and closer to getting a uh, thousand subs so yeah I wonder if that might be the reason why maybe uh, bots are pushing their content onto look onto channels that get uh, decent traffic so please help me with that if you guys can I do appreciate it but anyway let's jump right back into Devon and uh, ooh, let's see where the night takes us <clears throat> You can't help but start to imagine what it might look like from even closer. Who knows, maybe one of you will find some alien structures on one of the planets someday. But for now, look for an object with a golden color, shining steadily just a tad bigger than the other ones around it. First, you will need to locate it with your own eyes before finding it through a telescope. The mobile app, the mobile map you have on your phones will be very helpful. An object with a golden color, shining steadily just a tad bigger than the other ones around it. Easy to say, hard to find. I start up the sky map, hoping that it will help. I have absolutely no idea how to use it. Maybe I should have just read a manual or something before the lesson. I look around in desperation. Maybe I'd be better off joining someone else after all. Also, it's already the end of the day, and I still haven't asked anyone about sharing the room for tonight. I think it's finally the time to make that decision, and this might be the best moment for that. So, who am I going to ask? It's daddy time. Oh, um, someone I'm very close to pointed out that, uh, Devin may not actually be a panther. He may be a, uh, one second. Let me look this up. Let me look it up. Give me one second, guys. Uh, let's see. They said a, oh, yeah, a melanistic jaguar. So he may not, not actually be a panther. He might be a melanistic jaguar because of his markings. So if you guys don't know what that is, do look it up. Uh, he definitely looks like one now that I've seen one. Anyway, <clears throat> I don't know. Melanistic jaguar daddy definitely doesn't have the same ring to it. <laughs> Devin, I'm really going to ask my teacher if I can stay in his room tonight, aren't I? He's hard to miss, easily being the tallest person here. Among the students here, only Rune is anywhere near his height. He's standing next to Professor Arn, who is instructing him. Hmm. Maybe now is not the best moment. <clears throat> I'll try doing as much as I can myself. And maybe Professor Arn will leave Devon alone in the meantime. Okay, this can't be too hard. I turn on the sky map again and look over the interface, searching for any cues. Finally, I find a button that opens a menu with all the major objects in the solar system, obviously including Saturn. Hmm, maybe it is easy after all. After a bit of struggling with the interface, I finally located Saturn in the night sky and managed to point my telescope roughly at it. I battled with the equipment for a bit before I noticed the smaller finder scope attachment at the top of the tube. That helped a lot. Every once in a while, I glance at Devin, but, I, but it looked like Professor Arm was helping him with the task and didn't plan on going anywhere else. I hope he won't misunderstand me. Although, I'm not even sure myself what my intentions are. Before today, I had a completely different image of him, and now I can't help but feel intrigued. Other than what Rune told me when the three of us were talking together in the common room, I still know so little about him. I usually spend time with people my age, so talking to Devin feels much different. It's like, when I'm the, when I'm the one... It's like, when I'm with the people that are my age, friends or other students, it's like staring at a pond. I can measure a pond, count the pebbles on its coast, and if the surface is calm and the water clean, I can even look at the bottom. With Devon, I feel like standing in front of an incomprehensible lake, one whose other side I can barely see. One second, guys. <clears throat> okay. And yet, I don't feel intimidated by that feeling, only curious. Now, only some fine adjustments with precise knobs of the tripod the telescope is standing on. Everything should be ready. 
Letting out a relieved sigh, I smile, feeling quite proud of myself. I lean in and look into the telescope. In the middle of the image, there's a rust-colored orb with a ring around it. I was expecting it to look like a flat image, but it's very real and three-dimensional. The planet casts a shadow on one side of the rings, and there's a thin shadow of the ring on the planet itself, too. It's not too big, but I see it very clearly. Okay, that was something. Oh god, I love staring into space. I look up at the sky, dotted with twinkling stars. Saturn is now only a pale dot, tiny and distant. It looks like nothing like it looks nothing like the massive planet I saw just moments ago. And it's just one pale dot among many. It's good to look at the night sky from time to time to remind ourselves how small we are. It puts things in perspective, doesn't it? Devon? Devon appears behind me, seemingly out of nowhere. His feline eyes shine in the darkness, the starry sky reflected in them. Oh, sorry for sneaking on you like that. I saw you looking at me a few times. Did you want to ask me something? Professor Orrin kept me busy. Sorry for that. It's nice of him to let you participate, too. You're right. I'm glad he did. How did you like it, by the way? I see you're already done. Yes? Yeah, I finished just a moment ago. I struggled a bit with the app, but after that, the rest was easy. I used similar tripods for my cameras, so I roughly knew how this works. I didn't really know what to expect. I had never used a telescope before, but it was much more interesting than I assumed. <laughs> That's good to hear. That was Professor Arn's intention, mostly, to show, you, to show you that this could be interesting and fun without just dumping facts on you. That worked well, then. What about you? Did you enjoy it, too? Yes, it was nice. I had a telescope when I was a kid, but it was more of a toy than a real thing. The image quality and the magnification on these ones is much better. Young Devin playing with a telescope on the back porch of a lonely house somewhere in Ohio. No, I can't imagine him as a kid. I bet, I bet he would look cute and endearing, though. And that's just something that doesn't really fit the image of Devin I had in my head. I wonder if his parents bought it for him because he liked astronomy, or maybe they tried to get him interested in science. Oh, but I almost forgot why I came here. So, was there anything you wanted to ask? I gulped loudly. I hope I don't look nervous now, because I don't really have a reason to, even if I am... Ah, I'm getting tangled up in my thoughts, and meanwhile, Devin is looking, me ex looking at me expectantly, and I'm making this only weirder. Come on, nothing weirder than asking your teacher if you can sleep in his room. Actually, y yeah. You remember the situation with my room? Yes, I was meaning to ask you if you found a place to stay tonight. Well, not yet. So, I th thought I could ask you. Oh! Oh, that expression change! Oh! I noticed that! That was cool! It's silent for a while, long enough to make me regret asking. Then Devin glances up at the starry sky before looking at me again. Well, if you didn't find anything else, then it is my duty as a teacher to help you. Phew. That sounded oddly formal, but it was a yes. It sounded a bit like he was telling that to himself rather than to me. Maybe I shouldn't mention it to him that I didn't really ask around. I feel kind of bad about this, but he already agreed. Thank you. Uh, really, I didn't expect you to agree. I have a free bed in my room, so it's not a problem at all for me. As long as you're feeling comfortable with that, Carvin. He seems more serious now, looking at me expectantly as if waiting for a confirmation. Of course, I wouldn't ask otherwise. Good then. Let me get back to Professor Arn. We're wrapping up soon. I'll get back to you after we finish, okay? Sure. And he walks away, leaving me here alone. My head is spinning. And I black out. <laughs> okay, it looks like our time here is up. Thank you all for attending the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it, and maybe even gained a new passion. Supper is already waiting for you in the cafeteria. You're free to take it with you and eat anywhere you like. Have a good night, everyone. A crowd of students starts walking back to the guesthouse, queuing to the entrance door. 
pair of antlers is sticking up from the crowd. I want to wave to their owner, but he's not looking in my direction. It looks like he's busy talking with... Is that Jorgen? I think so, but I can't be sure. I only saw a pair of pointy ears. I walk in the opposite direction towards Devon and Professor Arn. That went quite well, didn't it? Goodness, it's late already. Devon, will you take the telescopes back into the guest house? I'll be leaving to my room if you're okay with that. Sure, no problem. You can go. Good night, then. See you tomorrow. Good night. Oh, Carvin. I have to help. I have to help here a bit. Go ahead with the rest. I and I go ahead and the rest and have some food. Oh, hello there, uh, Carvin. Did you want something? Uh, hello, Professor. I actually wanted to talk with Coach Devon so I can wait. So I can wait. Oh, I was just saying goodbye, so I'll leave you two now. Good night again. Rest well before tomorrow. I don't know if you have. I don't know if you've heard our conversation, but I need to stay behind and tidy up after the stargazing. It'll take a while, so you can go and have some food. Come over to room number two, just whenever. I should be there in 15 minutes at most. I won't be locking the door in case you'd come when I'm already asleep. This is going in a different direction than I hoped. I thought I could have supper with him, but it means waiting for him or convincing him to let me help him, and he is rather unrelenting. Maybe that's a chance to meet with someone else in the cafeteria, or go for a short walk before the end of the day. No, I'm gonna help him. Let's, let's, uh, let's get that help done. Yeah! I can stay here and help you. It'll go twice as fast if we're working together. There's no need to, really. The telescopes aren't exactly light and would feel bad if I let you do the work I'm supposed to do. It'll be over with real quick. You can go ahead and have some food. Okay, I hope I won't make things awkward now, but I need a better reason to help him. I actually hoped I could go eat with you. Everyone else has left already anyway. Oh. Hmm. I guess we could if you want to. We could try catching Rune later in the cafeteria, too, if I finish this quickly. Haha, <laughs> if you finish this quickly, huh? <laughs> and if I could help you, it'll go much faster. And I'd feel bad knowing you're here alone, here, you're alone here doing all the hard work yourself. Well, that's what I'm here for, you know. But, if you really want to, I won't forbid you, but I really can't handle it myself. I count the telescopes quickly. There's 15 of them here, and I don't know how heavy they are, but it shouldn't take too long. They're going to be heavy. Where should we take them? Hmm, to the lobby for now. There's a, there's a storage room next to it. I almost said there's a strange room next to it. Is it a door marked pirate? Okay, let's not waste our time talking. The, la the faster we finish this, the earlier we can go eat. Right, and I'm quite hungry, Mom. I'm quite hungry already. I'll bet you are. I swam quite a lot today. Some extra calories now would be nice. I'm not that hungry yet. The dinner we had was quite filling. <laughs> you should eat more too, Carvin. Today was a t today was a tiring day, especially if you're not used to swimming. Maybe you didn't swim as much as me and Rune did, but you tied yourself for sure. Devon goes away to open the door to the guest house, and I approach the closest telescope, trying to find the best way to grab it. Fortunately, it's lighter than I thought it would be, and I lift it with ease. Okay, so it's not heavy. Interesting. It will be easier to carry if you fold the tripod legs together. Oh, right. It's not too heavy for you? I'm not that frail. It's fine, really. Okay, let's go. I do as Devin said, hugging the telescope tube to my chest with one arm and holding the tripod with the other, and start walking back to the guest house. It's not very comfortable, but at least I have a firm grip on the telescope and can see where I'm going. Almost. Devin is following me, carrying a telescope himself, too. Ooh, pretty, pretty. Ah, the warm inside. Careful, there are stairs here. Okay, now unfold the legs and put it down next to that wall. Why aren't we putting them in the storage room? They need to get they need to get acclimatized first. If we dismantled them now and put them in the bags, moisture would build up on them and could and could cause some damage. They should dry within 15 minutes. Only then they're ready for storage. Well, that was easy enough. Although with 15 of them, that's quite a lot of walking. We moved the telescopes one by one, without any complications. Devin mostly stayed silent during that time, likely wanting to finish quickly. Finally, the last two ones. Let's get this over with. I put down my paw on the floor, but the floor isn't there. I forgot about the stairs.
Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, by the way, he is getting a new sprite. And I love the way his new sprite looks. Oh, anyway, <clears throat> all right. Whoa, whoa, careful there. Suddenly I find myself leaning on someone who appeared seemingly out of nowhere and caught me mid-fall together with the telescope, which is now poking painfully at my stomach. How is he even able to support my weight? He looks so slender. It's because he's a ghost. Woo! It is close to Halloween. Come on now, I thought I used my limit of bad luck up for the day. I'm so surprised that I simply stare at him with my snout ajar. It... Garvin, are you fine? The sound of a drop telescope echoes in the hallway and Devin rushes to me, effortlessly lifting me off the cat. His paws are gentle and yet his grip on my waist is firm. Ooh, Ooh I like that! He quickly lets go of me, though, as soon as I'm standing firmly on my own paws. Ah, damn it! Ah, okay, guys, there we go. That's the end of the episode for this one. Um, we didn't quite get to Devin's room yet, but we're almost there. We're almost there. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be so good. Maybe. I don't know. It could be a very disappointing evening for both of us. Who knows? I don't know. That gentle paw. That gentle paw on your waist. Ooh, I know that feeling, and that is a good one. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell until the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.